What is up guys, Wrestling Premiere is here. To me, it's hard not to agree with people who say this was Batista's best run. I of course love his 05 run, there's an argument to be made here, right? Batista became everything he hated, yet still retained being the meme machine. It was like Rock's 03 run in which he only had a short good run, and fans were wanting more. You know, when I look at you, I see money, 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 dollar signs all mad. It was really putting in a hell of a lot of effort to make this work, and it did. I have fond memories watching Batista whine like a baby about how he was screwed or whatever, and in a bunch of these promos, he'd have a hilarious, memorable quote. He had a very unfortunate run, you know, it didn't go as the way he expected in 2014, but hey, at least he made Daniel Bryan the Shield look like a million bucks, so there's that. But anyways, enough talk, that's another story for another day. This video in particular is about the skinny jeans Cry baby whiner, Kanye like Batista. Now, before this video starts, which video do you guys want me to remake next? I think you guys really want Hall of Pain. Honestly, it was actually gonna be today's video, but turns out, well, I thought it was gonna be too long. I guess I was wrong about that one, right? Yes, this one's a remake. The original is 10 minutes. The dialogue is absolutely horrible. It's December to December 2006 level horrible. Like, man, that, that video, honestly, I just didn't like it. I liked that at the time, of course, but now, no, it's just not gonna cut it. Anyways, how did Batista become a heel? How did he get to this point? Well, to put it bluntly, Batista in 2009 was struggling. It's weird saying that a guy who won the WWP Championship four months earlier was struggling, but he was. I mean, he suffered two injuries that left him sidelined for a long time. You know, the first one occurred in December of 2008, and it left him out till after WrestleMania. And he was initially supposed to face John Cena at that event. And the second was so abrupt, but even in spite of it, he won the title only to drop it two days later to the greatest of all time himself, Vacant. There was even a rumor around this time that he planned on retiring. Despite all of this, Dave was still one of WWE's top names. Not as much as previously, you know, there was other guys that were on or above his level. He was a five-time champion at this point, I should know. And no, I'm not gonna say Batista's irrelevant or whatever. He was still a big deal, just not as much as previously. So where do we start off? The September 14, 2009 episode of Raw. Why? Because this was the night Batista returned. He came out to make a career-altering decision. His arm was still in a brace and the commentary team were teasing retirement. Hell, Batista himself teased it by thanking the fans, but it turned out he only did this to fool Randy Orton. Randy Orton was the same man who was responsible for the injury in kayfabe, and Orton initially thought he ended Batista's career, but he whooped his ass showing what's up. His announcement wasn't that he was retiring, but that he was actually going to SmackDown, and another thing to note is that he was going to have his last match on Raw against Orton. Oh, and it's no holds barred. Dave ended up beating him with Cena's help, and he was off to SmackDown. His return to Friday nights was off to a great start, you know, he beat Chris Jericho in the main event, and the big show the following week. He reformed the team with Rey Mysterio, and not only that, but they were vying for tag team gold. It was all good for Batista, but then that honeymoon phase fizzled out and he was taken else. Of course, Dave wasn't responsible for the loss at Hell in a Cell, but it affected him. Then, he lost to CM Punk the following week by Kana in a match that was actually going his way, and if it wasn't a sign that Batista was falling hard, he lost to Rey Mysterio. No disrespect there, I'm trying to say he lost his form. The loss, though, was kind of marred with controversy, because Batista believed the ref made a mistake. You know, he claims to have called the shoulders down the mat. But he was clearly wrong there, right? But still, Batista swallowed his pride and congratulated Ray. As for bragging rights, well, you guys know what happened. So the match was fatal four way for the world title. Batista received a pretty positive reception, and during the match, he turned into the biggest baby ever, a bigger baby than Kanye himself. So at one point, Batista manages to spear the Undertaker. Ray was staring at him, wondering who's going for it. Neither did, but Batista did have a spine buster a few seconds later. Then he had the Batista bomb on the Undertaker. He goes to the cover, but Ray breaks it up, and he's all, You're supposed to be my friend. He's complaining already. This almost cost him the match, but he got a shoulder up, but it didn't matter though, because Taker hit that tombstone on him shortly afterwards to retain the title. So already, Dave was angry at Ray. I mean, look at that throw. Right after the match, Josh Matthews interviewed both men. Ray was much more on the positive side, whereas Batista, he felt his friend wronged him. He claimed that he was this close to winning, and then Batista said that he's tired of coming this close, and he's tired of his best friend stabbing him in the back. Ray was trying to be all positive, you know, we worked hard, it wasn't our night, whatever. And then Batista's like, Ray, I'm gonna rip your head off, and boom, he clotheslined his head off, and Todd Grisham's like, he wasn't playing, like, that's it. That's all you're gonna have to say about Batista destroying his best friend. Come on, man, come on. Fans boo by the sounds of it, keyword sounds of it, and best of all, Batista grabs Ray by the throat and shouts, You're supposed to be my friend! Mysterio just wanted him to cool down, but he preferred to throw him into the barricade. Mixed reaction there. And to top it all off, he delivered yet another stiff kick to the head. And yes, he wasn't playing. I mean, it's evident. 
I bet if Matt Stryker was there, he'd say something along the lines of, I like this new Batista, such an enraged size of the animal. Despite the fact that the madman damn near ripped his head off, Ray wanted to make amends, like, bro, he almost killed you. Anyways, Batista did appear, he straight up told Ray that he doesn't realize how bad this can get for himself. He questioned Ray, asking him, like, who in the hell do you think you are to call me out? And he gave him one more opportunity to walk out of the ring. And the former world champion almost did that. Like, man, you won the world title, why would you be scared of Batista? What do you have to state? Mysterio tried explaining things from his perspective, you know, it was fatal four-way, of course he was gonna try and win the match, and then he acknowledged Batista as a big brother and was under the belief that this was just a sibling fight. Batista responded to this stating that Ray was basically worried over his future because Big Dave ain't there to protect him. And worst of all, what is Dave gonna do to me if I don't get out of this ring? Mysterio was worried over what Batista was capable of and refused to believe it. He said that this guy was familia, his family, and then he's like, if I knew this would tear our friendship apart, I wouldn't try and win it. The animal didn't want to hear any of this, and he gave him one last chance to turn around and walk away. He refuses to go again and try to remind him of the past, and the Hail Mary throw reminded him of Eddie. He's like, what about Eddie? So Batista responds to this, stating that Eddie's dead. The crowd was in shock, and he said that the only person he cares about is himself. Then he walked out. Damn, Eddie's dead just like that. In my eyes, I saw as Batista thinking Ray's selfish, you know, he's trying to drag Eddie into this. Like, how dare he? In the back, Matt Hardy, of all people, makes sense. Tried telling Dave that he should make up with Ray. He was very remorseful of the things he did in the past to Jeff and asked Batista to think about what he's doing. Dave smirked at him before returning to make an attack. Josh Matthews once again tried to get Batista to explain why he assaulted his friend. And it was simple. It was about the world title. That's what it was all about. Ray Mysterio was getting him sidetracked. He was losing matches with him. So he decided to cut the dead weight, right? Also, he ended up destroying Matt Hardy in that week's main event. Sure, he didn't win, but he basically caused destruction. At one point, he was looking for the power bomb, but felt the fans didn't deserve it. So in essence, Dave was greedy. The world title caused him to end his friendship with Rey Mysterio, become even more intense than previously, and basically it was going to stop at nothing to win that title. Shortly afterwards, a match between Batista and Rey Mysterio was made for Survivor Series. The contract had yet to be signed by either men, and Batista came on donning the SVR 2011 look. He was very eager to have the match, and he was in such a festive mood. He made sure to have a little hold harmless agreement in there because he was craving a beatdown. And once Ray heard about this, he's like, I'm not signing it. And Dave had this disappointed father look on his face, and he threatened to snap his little neck like a twig in front of all these people if he doesn't go through with it. Ray, being a baby, ends up signing it, knowing that the worst was coming. And then he had the nerve to say that Batista's the one who's going to be embarrassed at Survivor Series before flipping the table over him. Batista was going crazy like he realized his stock went down or something, and the match was official. Dave felt Ray was the biggest idiot for signing the Hold Harmless Agreement and promised to not allow himself to be embarrassed by him at Survivor Series. Yeah, about that, Batista was right. Ray did hit the 619 and put up a fight, but this was a whole different animal we're talking about. I mean, I said it in this Survivor Series video, but this match felt like an introduction to heel Batista. Like the first episode of his show or something along the lines of that. He punished him and then some. He delivered so many spine busters and Batista bombs that he won as a result of knockout. Like, Ray couldn't defend himself. That's how badly he was beaten up. Funny enough, the fans were chanting his name, Batista, despite this. And that's because of the hometown, of course. Then he carried Ray onto his shoulder and spine busted him onto the chair, much to the delight of the crowd. Not all, of course. The next night on Raw Special Edition, Ray Mysterio, despite the beating he took, he decided to appear. Turns out it wasn't him, why? Because it was Batista who came out. He held Ray responsible for what happened last night and explained his actions. This was because of Ray embarrassing him during the contract signing, and the reason why he was here in the first place was because he hoped somebody from Raw wins the Battle Royal, because if it's somebody from SmackDown, he's gonna destroy them. He wanted The Undertaker and the world title. It's simple as that. Batista was all tough, but then Kane interrupted. He wanted to know what constitutes disrespecting Batista, and he was ready for a fight, but Batista preferred to walk away. Smirk once again there. They ended up facing one another for the right to be called number one contender on SmackDown that week, and Kane did put up a hell of a fight, but Dave was determined to become champ. He had to cheat to win, though. I mean, the guy has been through a lot. He, he fought good, you know, he fought clean for several years. It doesn't get you anything. So he decided to cheat, right? I mean, all I can recall is Batista screwing up his chances in a bunch of number one contender in world title matches. Heading into TLC, Batista was completely all over The Undertaker. He was remorseless and very, 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 very cunning. Teddy Long noticed the change in behavior and made a match between himself and Rey Mysterio in a three fight. They was satisfied because it was Rey and there was a whole harmless agreement once again in there. And if you're wondering, when did Batista debut the spotlight thing? Well, December 11th, 2009. 
He, of course, had the curse to complain about Ray State and that he doesn't even deserve to be in the same ring as him. And with regards to the fans, he straight up told them that it's not about them. It's about him becoming World Heavyweight Champion, and he doesn't want to hear them cheer him nor boo him. And if they don't understand, well, this was the moment he demanded the spotlight. And then he uttered my favorite quote from the promo. I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to make money. I'm here to win titles. Everything about me screams World Heavyweight Champion. The way I walk, the way I talk, the way I look, dress, in-ring dominance, everything. Damn. Batista really wanted the fans to hate him. And as for The Undertaker, he said that he looked into his eyes and saw nothing but fear. He lying, of course. And he felt Taker already lost and TLC was essentially a formality. And before leaving, he told the fans to follow along with him and save these words. He was treating them like idiots, of course. World Heavyweight Champion Batista, damn. That was really a standout promo for Batista, it was very good. As for the street fight, Ray did stay in it, but the ending was the same as Survivor Series. His back down on the mat. Dave did try to add insult to injury, but a certain dead man came to the rescue. Now, I already mentioned this match during Taker's title reign, you know, that video. But long story short, Batista was screwed. So it was a chairs match, right? During the match, Batista blow blow Taker before blasting him with a chair to win the title. Then Teddy Long ruined everything by restarting the match. This leads to a Batista loss. Next night on Raw, Batista aired his grievances Kanye style. You know, he interrupted Maria's speech to complain and complain and complain. He felt that he should have been up for Superstar of the Year and whined about how he should be World Heavyweight Champion and how he should win Screwjob of the Year award. And then to make matters worse, his former friend Rey Mysterio became the number one contender. He tried sabotaging that match but ended up getting his ass beat. And it was just a bad time for Batista. Things were bad. I mean, he had yet another opportunity to face The Undertaker, but wasted too much time and Ray ended up screwing him over, you know, beat the clock rules. Since he was wrong, the match between himself and Ray was made for the following week. Winner goes to the Rumble. That match was ruined by The Undertaker, and so they had a cage match. It was the culmination of the feud. Batista ended up screwing himself over once again, like this guy just didn't understand it, and Ray Mysterio was the one who went to the Rumble. He was screwing himself over with these beat downs, these attacks and whatnot, that it was making him forget what's important. So he steered in the right direction by obliterating Finley, and he was all fired up during this segment. And then afterwards, he grabbed the mic and tease doing that to 29 others, and then he proclaimed himself to be the winner, citing WrestleMania to be the beginning of the title reign, also meaning Taker's streak ends. Anyways, Batista entered at number 30, and the ring had star power in abundance. There's just three other guys in there, yet there was enough talent to draw money. Batista ended up ruining everything for one Shawn Michaels to win douche of the year, and just like that, he was out. Even I took it personally, and I wasn't even in the match. He ended up getting eliminated by Cena, who ended up getting thrown out by Edge. Now, what we didn't know was that Batista took that personally. Why? Because the next night on Raw, a feud between himself and the champion. So Vince McMahon was in the ring insulting Bret Hart, saying stuff like he has no charisma, he dresses like a hobo, whatever. But Hitman got angry and tried doing something about it when Batista, of all people, came to the boss's rescue. After Raw concluded, Batista made John Cena look like a joke. He was coming to the aid of Bret Hart, you know? And even Batista bombed him atop some steel steps. CM Punk was pissing himself at the thought of facing Batista because those two were set to face off in an Elimination Chamber qualifying match. But a snow day in the form of Batista walking out came his way. For some reason, right when the bell rang, Batista was very calm and composed. CM Punk was ready for a fight, but the animal just slowly exited the ring and walked straight to the back, losing by countout. The commentary team found this very odd because the chamber was basically everybody's last chance to have a world title match at WrestleMania. CM Punk was looking like he was ready to go to Disneyland, and it wouldn't be apparent as to why Dave did this until two weeks later. Meanwhile, Rod John Cena was ready to fight Batista. Dave would respond, but via satellite. At this point in time, Cena didn't receive any reason as to why it was mauled. And he wanted to provoke him by turning his back, you know, so Batista could deliver a cheap shot. But he wasn't even in the arena. Batista said that if and he has a funny feeling that they will meet in the ring, Cena's gonna wish it was a bad dream. This entire thing was so funny to Batista, why? Because Cena's running his mouth when he's not there. He's talking the talk, but he isn't walking the walk. But he promised that he will be on Raw next week, and if Cena still wants those answers, he is willing to give them to him. John responds to this saying that he ain't scared of him, and if he wants some, he can come get some. And yeah, that's the segment. So, they were finally going to do it. John Cena versus Batista. This was a feud that they have been planning to do for years up to this point, but they never went through with it. At Elimination Chamber, John Cena managed to capture the WWE Championship after going through hell. But he got rewarded with an announcement from the boss himself, Mr. McMahon. He congratulated Cena and announced he's going to WrestleMania. But as long as he defends the title against this man, and out he came Batista. Of course, Stryker liked it. He likes everything. 
Batista smirk was there. Bell rings and Cena delivers a right hand that manages to awaken the beast who hits a spear and then a Batista bomb to become the new WWE champion. John Cena's dream of main eventing WrestleMania for like the fifth time is dashed. Of course, the ex-champion had to respond in some way. I mean, he was screwed over. He had this look of embarrassment on his face the next night Ron won his title shot then and there, so McMahon came out and spilled the beans on this deal with Batista. To him, it wasn't personal, it was just business, and he tried blaming Cena for all of this. You know, if you want some, come get some, that statement. As for the title match Cena wanted, well, Batista ain't defending it until WrestleMania, and even if there was a title match, Sheamus has a rematch clause. But despite this, McMahon booked the Cena match for the main event, and if he wins, he goes on to WrestleMania to face Batista. At this point in time, nobody but the boss himself knew who the opponent was until he dropped the bombshell. It was Batista. Cena was pissing himself by the looks of it, and about that match, well, it ended up being a massacre. The animal came out in all his glory and you know, his spotlight, and it seemed like he was playing mind games with the former champ, taking his time and entering the ring. When the bell rang, Cena quickly sprinted after him, but he was still playing mind games, then he straight up kicked Cena in the balls to lose by DQ. Intentional, of course. Then the destruction begins. Batista trolled everyone twice into thinking that he was done with the attack, but he wasn't. And he continued blasting him with chairs and whatnot, just leaving him a battered, beaten man. The fans booed Batista as Rock goes off the air. Now, I like this. Why? It showed that Batista wasn't scared of John Cena, and he wanted that WrestleMania match simple. It showed that Batista wasn't like the other heels, you know, he knew what he was capable of, you know, he's a powerhouse. And besides, why would he be scared of Fruity Pebbles? He beat him in the past. Yes, it was five years in the making, sure should have happened in the past, but better late than never. The following week, John Cena wanted to make logic of why Batista's continuously attacking him. You know, he's already champ, why is he attacking me? The fans are cheering Cena's name and he's all positive about how he's got a main event match against Batista at WrestleMania. But he quickly reminded everyone, that's four weeks away, and he's gotta give Batista some payback. And out he came with a bunch of security. Cena thought it was comical that the champ was out here with security. It was hilarious in his eyes, but Dave quickly explained why they're there. They're not here to protect him, they're here to protect John himself. He had no problem coming down and hurting him again, but the guys were here to prevent that. John tried to get Batista angry by calling him names, but the tactic clearly wasn't working. Dave explained why he attacked Cena last week, and it was because he wanted to face him at WrestleMania. He took a trip to 2005 and how they both broke through at the same time, and he acknowledged how they're the biggest stars since the Attitude Era, and for some odd reason, the WWE decided to label him, John Cena, as the man. Cena couldn't believe Batista stooped that low. The champ was jello over the fact that Cena was on covers of magazines, commercials, movies. And Dave mentioned how the torch was passed from Rock and Austin directly to Cena himself. He wasn't happy about this because he felt Dave Batista was the best choice to be the name in face of the WWE. And the reason as to why he assaulted John last week was because he wanted to. He wanted to beat some sense into him in second. He just couldn't stand the guy. Damn. The challenger responded to the statement saying that it's unfortunate things didn't work and also credited his work ethic as to him being the face of the company. You know, I show up on time, whereas you're late. I've given my life for this business. You're selfish, yada, yada, yada. And Batista actually agreed with that statement. He said that he's here to win titles, make money, and he doesn't care if they cheer or boo him. He is not here for that. And then, the iconic quote. These are Batista's words. We can go on kissing babies and hugging fat girls. We'll all be at a gym training somewhere and thinking about beating the hell out of you at WrestleMania. And then the champ proceeded to remind him that every time they're in the ring, bad things happen to Cena. John tried responding, but he just couldn't. Why? Because Batista didn't care. He felt anything Cena uttered is irrelevant, and he can get all these people excited, bark, 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 but that's not what he does, and for the hell of it, he wanted to hear an inspirational quote from John Cena. He was left speechless, and before leaving, Batista straight up told him, you can't beat me, and deep down, you know. Damn. Many consider this to be Batista's best promo, you know, he dominated John, he was pointing out his flaws and making him seem like a villain, and there's nothing he can do about it. It was very different from the regular John Cena promos, you know, how he always ends up on top verbally by the end. Yeah, it was very different from that. Like, whenever he had a promo with Edge or CM Punk in the future and whatnot, he wasn't left speechless like Batista did here. It took John one week to respond to this, and he knew that Batista was unbeatable, so he said that the only thing to do was to beat him. I don't know what that means, but whatever. Things got worse for him when he faced four men in a gauntlet match. By the way, McMahon was also a participant. Batista did make his presence felt despite the promise. You know, he promised not to appear. Kofi Kingston tried making a save and initially the attack was working, but Batista was a powerhouse. As for Cena, despite facing several other men, he had enough fight in him to knock down the animal and go after the chairman himself. This didn't really work out his way and Mr. McMahon ended up being victorious. Then Batista posed atop a fallen John Cena. 
He was in really bad form at this point, you know, but he still, he was just like five steps ahead of him. He was costing him matches heading into WrestleMania. There wasn't a damn thing he can do about it. Then came their final encounter before WrestleMania, which is my personal favorite Batista promo. Once again, the champion comes out with security, spotlight was on, of course, and he spoke about WrestleMania and the fans. He's trolling them, asking to boo, and he tells them that John Cena is going to lose at WrestleMania. He was shouting that he will never lose to him and suggested the fans get used to it, and man... Was he really in his element at this point? He was making fun of the fans' appreciation for John Cena, treating them like idiots, and Batista was under the belief that people hate him because he's honest. Then he uttered this iconic quote. These are his words once again. When I look at you, I don't see fans. I don't even see people. I see money, money, money. Dollar signs, dollar signs, dollar signs. With some of you, a lot of dollar signs because I see a lot of fat people in the audience and I know you pay for two seats. Thank you very much. He was very, 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 very rude. He really upset a lot of those fans. And I just wonder, like, what if this promo happened, say, today? Like, would the crowd have booed or cheered? I'm leaning towards cheered because they like heels a lot. But yeah, Batista was doing an awesome job at pissing off the fans. He believed that they paid to see greatness, you know, himself, of course. And this initiated the Cena chant. Before leaving, he told the fans that John Cena will disappoint at WrestleMania. And then he called them out. So John Cena comes out. He had this look of dread on his face, you know, as if the worst is yet to come. And he said that he's already let these people down, and that was the second Batista became champion. You can't wrestle chant intensifies, I don't know why. He saw himself not stopping Batista as failure, and made it seem like there was no hope. Hell, he didn't even know if all the fight in the world was going to give him a chance to beat him. Batista jumped at the opportunity to compare himself to everyone in the crowd, calling him a common loser. And John agreed with this. He said that he's like every one of these people, you know, we're sick and tired of your garbage. He took jabs at Batista's job, you know, him being a hired gun, saying that he's done a terrible job because he, John, is still here. Anyways, Batista was pissed, yet Cena decides to add fuel to the fire, saying that he doesn't see no animal. He sees Dave Batista, who he will beat at WrestleMania. Cena's like, I'm gonna win the title, and he turns his back against the champ. And he saw his disrespectful. He shouted stuff like, you're a corporate creation, a paper champ. And he let his guard down and thus began a brawl that Batista wasn't proud of. So Cena finally fights back in the build-up to WrestleMania. And for all of like five weeks, Cena couldn't fight back until then and there. Essentially, Batista had his number and he dominated him physically and mentally. So Cena had to go back to the drawing board and think to himself like, how can I best this animal? And he did it here. He showed that he has a chance at WrestleMania. Batista, on the other hand, was just so damn hilarious with the stuff he was saying. I, I was laughing when he called Cena a corporate creation. I just found it funny, even though it may not seem that way. The way he was mocking him earlier on with the spotlight and all that stuff. Man, just watching it again, I understand exactly why that was that was and is my favorite Batista promo. He was just... He was perfect during this time period. He was awesome. He was tremendous. He had a memorable run. So it all came down to this. WrestleMania 26, Phoenix, Arizona, March 28, 2010. John Cena challenges Batista for the WWE Championship. This match is one I really like. I feel it's underappreciated. I don't know why, though. I will definitely do it justice when I cover the entire thing. You know, WrestleMania 26 in a couple of weeks, hopefully. But anyways, Batista had an egotistical entrance. John had a special entrance once again. Match itself was good. I'm not sure if it was as good as its SmackDown counterpart, you know, Y2J and Edge, but it does stand its ground. And it might be better to you guys. I mean, I had more fun watching this last time around than the Edge and Jericho match, so there's that. The crowd was very into it, you know, there was impactful moves. They made the most out of the time given. There was near falls, finishers, cool, cool, cool match. In the end, Batista, though, tapped out to crown a new champion. Both guys were the top stars of the 2000s, and this was their first title meeting. I do think if this match happened, say, at WrestleMania 22, it wouldn't have been as good. And I think it would have been even more memorable, though. It's hard to tell though. So where does Batista go from here? The next night around he kicked off the show to whine about the loss. Batista complained about the lack of spotlight and after a minute they finally gave in. I found that hilarious. And he showed that he was such a prima donna. He was stuttering over his words because of the heat from the fans but once it all settled down he refused to give in and whine because the fans would be satisfied with it. And once again he's like oh it's a fluke. Cena won, he got lucky or whatever, you tapped out, chance intensified, sunglasses are off, and he promised to regain his title. He's shouting John Cena can't beat him, except that's exactly what happened in WrestleMania. The name in the face of the WWE obviously came out to stick it to Batista, but was offended. Despite this, Cena offered a rematch for that night. Unfortunately though, the former champion wasn't in the mood to please the fans, and Cena knew this very well. He was hoping Batista didn't go the regular heel route, you know, not tonight. And initially, he did make it seem like the fans were going to get what they wanted, but he uttered the same words many in the past have. Not tonight, and he brought with Cena for two seconds. 
He eventually did assault Cena and invoke his rematch clause, but it wasn't for that night. It was for Extreme Rules. The announcement required a spotlight, and it wasn't any ordinary matchup. Nope, it was last man standing. Now, the match itself had a very bad buildup. This wasn't because of the guys themselves, but because of the fact that there was a volcanic eruption in Iceland. And it meant the guys on Raw, you know, they were touring Europe, they were stuck. So SmackDown guys went out and had a show that night. They did have two interactions, though, on an April 12, 2010 episode of Raw. So during Cena's match with Otunga, Batista was lurking at the top of the stage, and the animal's ready for a fight. He notices that the champ was demanding he come down to the ring, and so he shouted, I say win. So basically, what I got out of this is the fact that Batista doesn't listen to anybody. At the end of the night, Batista almost took the L in a match against Randy Orton. You know, the RKO was so damn abrupt, but Jack Swagger crashed the RKO party. Immediately afterwards, John Cena sprints to the ring and locks him in the STF. The refs were trying their best to pull away Cena, but to no avail, and he kept that hold locked in so tight and so long until Batista passed out. He then proceeded to count to 10, you know, teasing what's to come at Extreme Rules. Now about their match at Extreme Rules, really awesome. Definitely one of WWE's best matches of 2010. I'd like to say it has a claim in being a top 5 singles match for Batista. You know, I had to narrow it down. But yeah, very great match because of the story. Whatever Cena dished out, Batista was back up. Vice versa. Both men, and I'm quoting Cena himself, never gave up. It brought this iconic moment. I hate you too. The announced table spot by the looks of it, it should have been the spot to end the match, right? Like, it just had that feeling to it. With Tia Sarah's resilience, the fans were so into the match. I mean, just hear them. The Willie really make the 10 count! Oh, God, get up, get up. He's so damn energetic. And at this point, Cena realized that this guy can't be stopped. He tried to AA him through another table, but he was caught with a spine buster. And then Batista tried wrapping it up with a Batista bomb. And once again, that could have been it. Cena basically had adrenaline at this point, so he barely gets up. Dave ends up finding himself in STF position. And he's tapping, but there was nothing to do. So he's knocked out, right? But he beats the count by a second. And so Cena, being the clever champ, grabs duct tape and sticks him to the ring post. The fans booed because of this. Batista tried to escape him, but the ref was rapidly reaching the count of 10. And what a heel was he! I mean, that's not very babyface-like of Cena, right? But in all seriousness, the match was ridiculous. In a good way. Many don't like the ending and how Cena required the use of duct tape to win. But me personally, I get where they're coming from. But... I saw Cena being smart, you know, he knew that the guy wasn't going down, so he thought to himself, why not? Then again, it basically showed that Batista might have been better than Cena, so Cena being the heel he is, technically cheats to win. I don't think he would be wrong either way, everyone has their own opinion. I'm just there with it, you know, I understand both sides. I saw it as very creative, but then again, it made Cena look like a heel, but who cares, right? Plus, the spot suited Batista perfectly. He was throwing a fit here. Look at him. Either way, love it or hate it, it was creative. The next night around, there was a number one contenders match to determine the next challenger for the title. And Batista, once he heard the announcement, he came out and whined about the number one contenders thing and called last night a joke. He threw a fit Caillou style and said that he wouldn't leave the ring until Cena grants him a match. Sheamus had to come out and remind him that he lost. He took the L. He had to shoehorn Orton into this calling him a loser too, so he came out. John Cena knew that this was going to turn into something wild, so he basically booked a triple threat match, much to the chagrin of Batista. As for how it went, Edge of all people cost Randy Orton the title shot, basically handed it to Batista. So there was going to be another match between those two for over the limit. The following week, Batista was annoying. He was talking about how he's number one contender again, and how he should be champion again. And then he gave the rundown on what a last man standing match is. And once again... Batista downed it down for the fans, and he's like, a last man standing match is when you beat your opponent so brutally and so decisively that he is unable to stand before that kind of tech. According to Batista, that wasn't what happened at Extreme Rules. He called what happened at the pay-per-view by far the most embarrassing moment of John Cena's life. Whoa. And then he's like, stoop that low. Duct tape? Are you serious? Really? That's something Hornswoggle would do. And that wasn't even the only thing Dave was pissed off about. He was angry over the fact that he was supposed to win this beat the clock challenge. It was for the stipulation of the match. And his opponent was supposed to be the Miss. But due to what doctors know, he was unable to compete. So he brought out his rookie instead, that being Daniel Bryan. Now, this match was supposed to be a squash, right? Well, Batista had too much respect for him. He was well aware of his work outside of WWE and let him get some offense. I read that in the interview. He really made D. Bryan look good, and he put in a gutsy performance, and at some points, it was like Batista was in hot water. I'd compare it to one of those Triple H Attitude Era matches, you know, with Taka or any other lower card star. It was something like that. But in the end, Batista won in 5 minutes and 6 seconds. This would have been good if Cena was facing Sheamus or someone. Instead, it was NXT rookie Wade Barrett, who took the L with 27 seconds left. Cena won, he chose an I quit match. 
heading into over the limit batista showed that he has a chance unfortunately though the guy he was facing literally went by the motto of never give up so i assume everybody knew who was winning i mean even as a kid i didn't think john cena was gonna lose an i quit match i don't think anyone has seen him quit since like 2004 but still, they did their best to show that he was a threat by having him beat up John Cena on a weekly basis. He killed Mark Henry using a whole new submission hold, showing that he's ready. Cena got a glimpse of over the limit, and to make matters worse, he had faced Sheamus in the non-title match a couple of minutes earlier, and it was bad. The new hold, the Batista bite, was proven to be a success, and so the animal had momentum heading into the pay-per-view. Anyways, about the match itself, good. Not as good as the Extreme Rules match, but still, good enough. Heading into the match, Batista claimed Cena shouted I quit on Raw. And one thing to mention is that the champ himself was eager to redeem himself. He felt that the win from Extreme Rules wasn't emphatic. It was a cowardly, cheap victory in his eyes. So over the limit was a way of silencing the critics, and most importantly, Batista. The match, it was a grand finale. Tables were broken, crowd fighting, Cena was in full on never give up mode as evident by the match choice. Batista was dominant during the match, but like I said, it's John Cena, he never gives up. Hell, Dave even tried using a vehicle to destroy Cena, but he screwed himself over by spending too much time resting in the seat. By the way, Cena moved out of the way. He AA'd him atop the car, but it still wasn't enough for the I quit, so Champ took it up a notch. He stood atop the vehicle and was ready to AA him off, but Batista finally shouts, I quit. Cena does it anyway, that's very babyface of him. Then again, the guy tried powerbombing him off the sand, so there's that. But yes, Batista, he lost again. He took the L. He took three L's in a row at this point. The next night, Batista actually appeared. Like, shockingly, he actually appeared despite the beating. He was black and blue, but managed to make his way to the ring. Despite all this, he wanted a spotlight. Like, man, you got bigger things to worry about, right? He admitted that he said, I quit last night, but he claimed that it was because his life was being threatened. And because of John Cena's malicious actions, he was contemplating filing a lawsuit against John Cena, the WWE, and every fan in the arena for supporting what happened. He was claiming to be all about honor, all while the fans chanted, you suck. He also revealed that because of the injuries, he's out for weeks, months, years possibly. Batista fell off so hard that Justin Roberts decided to interrupt his promo to introduce the new Raw GM during his segment. Like, that's how bad it got. Also, the new GM was Bret Hart. He came out and announced that there's going to be a fatal four-way qualifying match, and he heard Batista demand a match with John Cena, so Bret gave him the opportunity to face somebody in a qualifying match. And the look on Batista's face is like you demoted him to FCW or something. He mentioned being hurt, so Bret decided to pair him up with someone who was also hurt, Randy Orton. So Batista's like, what is your malfunction? I'm hurt. Him and though didn't care, it was take it or leave it. They've threatened to quit and Bret Hart, who didn't give a damn, announced Randy Orton as the winner before leaving. Bret did not even come back and Batista was a man of his word. He thought he was the savior of the product saying stuff like he'll go bankrupt within a week. And seeing as the fans still didn't care, he shouted those two words. I quit! They preferred to serenade him and to make matters worse, Justin Roberts is like, let's hear it for Batista. And so he's gone. Dave Batista has departed the WWE. Man, it just couldn't have come at a worse time, right? This was when WWE was losing stars in abundance, and Batista might have helped a little in the main event scene on Raw had he stayed. I think he could have had a story with Orin. He could have destroyed a mid carter like Evan Bourne. It's just so weird thinking about. Like, what if he did stay? It would be a bit better, you know, his heel character. Maybe it could have gone a ways. Maybe he could have gotten worse. Who knows? But yes, when he left, he left the fans wanting more. In an interview back in July of 2016, Batista spoke about what led to his departure from WWE in May of 2010. By the way, he's talking about John Cena during this part of the article. Basically, kind of mirror images of each other on our respective shows. But I'm getting afforded a lot less opportunities, and that didn't sit well with me, and I wasn't okay with that. I wasn't content with that, and so when they said, no, I wasn't going to be afforded those opportunities, I said, well, I'm going to leave then. That was kind of it, Batista commented. It's funny, I do a lot of things because I get pissed off, and I really hate when people tell me I can't do stuff. And when WWE had started on films and commercials, and I noticed that everything more and more was going to Cena, that at the same time, he's main eventing one series of shows, and I'm main eventing the others but he's getting all these opportunities that i'm not getting it just seemed a little unfair to me that i'm still out there busting my ass to do these shows while he's making movies and getting paid a buttload of money to make these movies so i simply asked the question is there any opportunity for me to do films and there wasn't they had no interest in me doing that so i said well if i'm not afforded the opportunity here then i should be afforded the opportunity to go outside the company on audition and the answer was you're our property get dressed for the house show and get to work i just thought it was unfair so i thought it's just really unfair it's unfair career-wise, it's unfair to me financially. Now, Batista, I didn't really see him all that much outside of WWE during his run. There was an episode of Smallville, he was featured in that episode, but other than that, I just can't think of much. And another thing to mention is that while I was making this video, 
I believe that movie Inside Out that Triple H was in, you know, that boring ass movie. Uh, that spot was initially for Batista, if the dirt sheets are to be believed. He was very, very, very angry, and this was a post in April of 2010. That might be the reason why he left. He also said that the company was getting too soft and all that stuff, but I think it had more to do with the movies and films and all this stuff like that. And this was about how he, they weren't really taking his departure seriously, and I quote, I gave them almost a year's notice and I did whatever they asked me to do and I busted my ass until the day I left. They didn't think I was leaving on the night that I left. I think a few people said goodbye to me and said thank you, but it was like a very few. And then I walked out. Security, mural, I sassy. Escorted me out the door by myself. No, see you later, Dave. Thanks for everything. Keep in touch. It was sad, man. It really put things into perspective on where I stood with them. I left there with a broken back. Not a lot of people realize that or appreciate that, but in my last match with John Cena, I broke my back. And so that's Batista's heel run. I will definitely, definitely dive into his 2014 Return of the Future. There's a lot to talk about there. It's TV matches, pay-per-view, hatred from fans. But this 2010 run, though, it reminds me of Hollywood Rock in the sense that it didn't last long. Didn't last that long and fans wanted to see more. Everyone that called them stale in mid-2009 was silenced. You know, the matches were much better. Character work was excellent. Promos, memorable. It was like he had a point to prove and the whining. The fits he was throwing, Kanye-esque. I just wonder what could have been had he remained in the company, you know, feud with CM Punk. He complained about how the fans were too loud and that's why he lost. When it was a program with Christian, you gotta wonder. My favorite match from this run, last man standing with John Cena. My favorite promo is the one with the tank top with a title on his waist. He's complaining, he's whining and all that stuff. I think that was a very, very excellent promo and it showed just how much Batista improved. So yeah, his program with Cena, it could have been a bit better. I like it though. Just a little tweaks here and there. I think it could have been way better than it was. But what we got was still good enough. So yeah, what you guys think of Batista's heel run? Please comment down below. That's our first video. Make sure you hit a Batista bite on the like button. And perhaps a Batista bomb on the subscribe button. Peace. I'm out.